I had previously concocted a witch's brew from undesired garden plants to fertilize the rambling cucumber vines I had neglected until then. This odor-challenged mixture appeared to help boost cucumber production as leaves turn greener and flowers set into plump fruit. Cucumbers usually take a few weeks establishing a good root system to then zoom up with explosive growth. They had climbed over the amaranth, breaking stalks in the process. I was growing food in different levels, with amaranth scaffolds covered by fruiting cucumber vines. I had even erroneously concluded that amaranth was serving as a trap crop to cucumber beetles, only to later discover that another beetle with uncanny similarity was responsible for skeletonizing the amaranth leaves. For some reason the cucumber growth was stellar, and the harvest was turning out to be a success. I had just to come up with a way to preserve it. I had planted three varieties of cucumbers, as I usually like to plant several varieties of a vegetable at any time. This increases genetic diversity in the garden, so that when a certain pest or disease pressure hits, there is greater chance that a variety is more resistant than another, and can survive. Lemon cucumber, round and yellowish with a bright flavor, is an old variety that produces an abundance showing signs of disease resistance. I had also planted a long, dark, green Japanese cucumber that featured bitter overtones. A white Holland cucumber with fine flavor completed the trio. The weather had been specially good for cucumbers this year, with mild, drier spring and summer days. I knew I wanted to preserve my harvest by saving seed and making pickles. Before I show you how I process the harvest to enjoy it during winter, I'll tell you how I save my own cucumber seeds to plant for the following year. Close to the end of the season, as early fall approached and the vines had shriveled up, I went about clearing the cucumber bed to reveal overripe fruit that had fallen to the ground and were starting to rot. I collected the mushy fruit to extract the seeds. Unlike other plants that produce dry seed that is ready to store, cucumber comes enveloped in a sack of goo surrounded by liquid. In order to save the seeds and keep them in a dry, cool place for storage, first you must let it ferment for a few days. This allows for the protective gel sac to rot, leaving the seed ready to sprout. This process happens naturally when the cucumber falls to the ground and ferments. A similar process happens with tomatoes. While you may be tempted to simply dry the seed and store it, Allowing it to rot will ensure you get cleaner seed that germinate faster when you decide to plant it. I put the seed goop into a jar, adding a bit of water and letting it sit for a few days. When selecting seeds to save, it is important to get cucumbers that are super mature. Fruit that falls naturally on the ground is perfect. Also, note that because plants in the cucumber family cross easily, if you want to ensure that you get the exact same variety each year, only plant one variety of cucumber to save seed. They will most likely create crosses otherwise, which can always be fun. The rotten smell quickly dissipated as I was left with clean seeds. I spread the clean seeds onto a paper towel to let them air dry until they could be easily snapped in half. That's a sign that it has the right amount of moisture. Coming up in the next block, I will share with you what I did with part of the cucumber harvest to extend its use into the winter, right after this advertisement. Suburban Homestead is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. I would like to specially thank those who have been watching the advertisements during these videos. If you would like to support more quality content in the channel, you can choose to become a patron through the channel's Patreon or buy art from my Etsy shop. This week I'm featuring hand-painted signs that show your support for endangered garden pollinators. Honeybees and monarch butterflies need a safe haven of home gardens. Show your support for them and support the channel. Hurry, limited offer. Cucumber is one of those crops that remind me of summer. They welcome the warmer season with their cool, crisp texture and flavor. There is nothing better than sinking your teeth into crunchy and watery cucumber on a lazy summer afternoon. They are usually eaten raw. 
garden fresh cucumber is supremely better than store bought, especially when compared with the sad specimens of cukes dipped in wax to preserve their crunchiness found in the produce aisle. It naturally starts losing crispness as soon as it is picked and can become stale in just a couple of hours. I decided to try a bread and butter recipe using my less than orthodox cucumbers. Pickles are usually done with rather immature young fruit to retain the crunchy texture. I was willing to try to innovate by using some more mature fruit of weirder varieties. First I washed the cucumbers well to remove any traces of dirt. I separated the cucumbers into respective varieties as I wanted to see how different each one would come out. I cut the cucumbers into pieces. The longer Japanese cucumber I cut into thick slices. If you have never eaten cucumber right out of the vine, you have never experienced what it truly is supposed to be. While homegrown tomatoes are all about flavor, homegrown cucumbers are all about texture. The only other way of enjoying cucumbers besides raw is by pickling them. I crushed ice and added it to the cut pieces, mixing pickling salt into it. This process is known to increase the crispness of pickles. I put the salted and cold pieces into the fridge for 6 to 8 hours. The lemon cucumbers I cut into rough wedges, using the seeds and all. Seeds do not make the best pickles, so if you want to make your pickles seed free, cut the cucumber lengthwise and with the help of a spoon, scrape away the seeds, leaving only the flesh. I use the same process of salting these pieces and letting it rest. To flavor the bread and butter pickles, I went out to pick some fresh dill seed from the garden. For some mysterious reason, the flavor of dill complements cucumber really well. I had seed heads maturing just in time. Using my fingers, I dislodged the dill seeds from the umbels. I then prepared the brine by pouring into a pan 6 cups of apple cider vinegar. Bread and butter pickles usually have a sweet component to them. In this case, I added 3 cups of sugar to create a vinegary syrup. A good amount of fresh dill seeds, mustard seeds, and powdered turmeric provided the spice base for this recipe. I added the spices, stirring the mixture, letting it come to a boil. Meanwhile, I sterilized the canning jars in boiling water. I got the cucumbers in the brine out of the refrigerator and went about draining them. They will have picked up some of the salt from the brine. When the vinegar syrup came to a boil, I dropped in the drained cucumber and immediately took the mixture off the heat. It is important not to let the cucumber cook too much since it will still have to go through the water bath processing. This is especially important with more mature cucumbers as they are liable to fall apart with their more tender texture. With the help of a wide mouth funnel and a ladle, I filled the jars leaving about half an inch of headspace. This airspace is important for the process of sealing the lids. Clean the lips of the jars to ensure a good seal. I closed the lids that were resting in warm water with the ring but did not over tighten. With the proper tool, I placed the jars in the pan with boiling water with at least 2 inches of water above the jars. I processed the jar for 10 to 12 minutes with boiling water. 
This will vary according to your altitude and jar size, so refer to a good canning guide. After processing, I remove them from heat and let them cool for 6 to 8 hours at room temperature. I checked the lids for proper seal and waited a couple of weeks for the pickle flavor to develop. I could then enjoy them for the coming months in sandwiches and to season soups and salads.